Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I recorded the F3 Nimzo Indian or the Kmoch Nimzo Indian. And now I'm going to play uh, Michel uh, or Surush, a patron in the variation. <clears throat> I'm going to be black and I'm going to try to fight uh, the F3 Nimzo Indian. Uh, we have agreed to play after the starting position uh, after F3. <coughs> so knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. Just say good luck. Okay, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. And now f3. Uh, and here, black has three possible moves. Uh, d5 is the main move. c5 uh, is the first sideline leading to Benoni type structures, which I don't really enjoy playing although I'm about to start playing the Benoni. Uh, and the third move is castles. I have to be honest, uh, I have been preparing the move castles for my game against Mate, which I was supposed to play today. And my plan was to play castles against Mate and then c5 against Michel. But uh, I like castles more, so I'm going to play that. Now he can either play a3 or e4. a3 is by far the most popular move. Uh, and the best move simply forcing me to take on c3 and continuing his plan of a central expansion e4 also makes sense but then i'm going to continue with d5 and after e4 d5 e5 uh, knight d7 i'm going for a french defense uh well this okay this move i've, I've never seen to be honest i i have no idea what this move is about Good to test the sidelines, I guess. Uh, okay. Making me think on move uh, one after we've agreed to, to enter this position. Well, let's just think about this move. Um, it's pinning my knight, so e4, e5 has a threat of winning a piece. That much is clear. He wants to play e4 anyway. Uh, It's allowing me to play h6, uh, in which case he's not going to capture on uh, on f6. He's going to play bishop h4. And the bishop rerouting back to f2 makes a lot of sense. So I could play d5, uh, stopping e4 for the moment. Uh, I could also play c5, which isn't a good move. I could play d6, which makes sense. I could play b6, which makes sense. I'm not sure why this move isn't playable, but for some reason I don't know it, uh, and that means that it's not a theoretical move. I'm going to try to think for a while and talk less. Okay, uh, I found a plan, uh, and that's to play rook e8, and after e4 to play the move e5, which I like, but I'm not sure I like it a lot. I kind of want to play h6 to see what he does. h6 seems like a useful move, which doesn't hurt me, and after bishop h4 I'm going to think then. Uh, now one common plan in this line with, with castles is to play knight h5, uh, and to then expand with f5, which I like, but in this case I would have to play the move g5 first, which I'm not a big fan of. I could always consider bringing my bishop back to e7, 
which I also don't like that much. Uh, so d5 makes sense. Uh, d5, if he plays e4, I'm going to take, weakening his center. Uh, if he takes, I'm going to take with the queen. And then if he plays e4, well, I'm going to take with the pawn. If he plays e4, I'm going to play rook e8. So d5 seems like the correct way to play here. Although I'm not sure once again, but d5 should be correct. d5, e4. d takes e4, f takes e4. g5, I'm winning the e4 pawn. So I'm going to continue with d5 because I don't see a better way to punish the move bishop g5. So now I'm stopping e4 for the moment. If he takes, takes, I'm still stopping e4. His king is still stuck in the center, and that's why I find bishop g5 to be a weird move. Now, a3 is more common, as I said now. a3 might be played once again. And also now, if a3 takes, takes, I can take on c4 and just play b4, reinforcing my center where e4, e5 can be met with g5, a sort of uh, semi-slav. Uh, idea. Okay, so e4 I'm going to take. He has to recapture with the pawn. And now I just win a pawn, if I'm not mistaken. So g5, bishop f2, and they take on e4. I, He could try queen f3, but I don't think that works. Because when I take on e4, there's a lot of pressure on c3, and it's not easy to defend this. That's why I think his his idea just doesn't work. <coughs> I'm not sure he knew the move castles. Maybe <coughs> he was preparing for d5 and c5. If he plays e5 first, trying to save the pawn, uh, then still knight e4 and... He doesn't have time to save the bishop and save the rook. If if he plays e, e5, then knight e4, and he has to move the bishop. Knight takes c3, pawn takes, bishop takes check, and game over. I, I'm not sure, but I think white is just losing here. I did overextend with g5, but I think in this position it's more than justified. Trying to exploit the pin... On, on a3 on, on c3 now he doesn't have time for for a3 either <coughs> sorry about that yeah i think he realized he's in trouble the thing with the f3 nimzo it's it's risky for white and you're leaving your king in, king in the center, you are trying to play the move e4, and you need to play extremely precisely. After castles, you need to know a lot of theory. Because the other plan, after castles, a3 takes takes, uh, I can either play knight h5, or I can play knight e8, and knight e8 has a very simple plan of stopping e4 in advance, or preventing e4 from being a threat on the knight. And then simply following that up with b6, bishop a6, knight c6, knight a5, and just putting pressure on the c4 uh, weakness. I like both plans. I like knight h5 more, as I said, because knight h5 after castles a3 uh, means that queen h4 check is a threat. So, yeah, it's not easy to play white. Now it, I, it's... I'm not sure what he was thinking. I did take a long time before d5. I don't think he should have played instantly. Okay, just knight takes e4. And what's, what's the problem? I don't think there is a problem. I think, uh, I think he's just busted here. A pawn up, queen f6 is coming. If the queen tries to defend on c2... Uh, then I can take the bishop, queen takes, and yeah, now uh, I should probably take the bishop. I can also play f5, although I shouldn't really play f5. 
If I take on c3, I have to move my bishop. Uh, if I take on f2, he's going to take with the queen. Uh, and then he's defending d5, but kind of like that. I want to be rid of his bishop pair. I cannot play queen f6 immediately because he takes my knight. I don't want to make another blind blunder like in the last game where I blundered the bishop. So do I take the bishop now and then increase the pressure on c5? Kind of like that plan. Or, uh, with, with c5, I'm sorry. So knight f2, queen f2, c5. If d c5, he cannot castle. Uh... Although I don't have to give up a pawn, I can just go knight f2, queen f2, b6 and have a normal game. Reroute my bishop back to f6 and put pressure on his center. I like that, I'm going to do that. Now if he castles, I'm probably going to, to double his pawns on c3. Yeah, black has the bishop pair in the Nimzo. That's that's a weird thing. A rare sighting. Queen takes is correct. Uh, c5 makes sense. Dc5, queen a5. I like c5. c5 castles, queen uh, a5. c5 castles... c5 castles, bishop c3, bc3, queen a5, putting pressure on both pawns, I like c5, c5, dc5, queen a5, double threat on the knight, if he takes, yeah, I like that, I want to play aggressively here, uh, I don't see a better move, now once again, if he, if he plays a3, then queen a5 is a move, because he doesn't have a queen on b3 to take my bishop, if you've seen uh, my game from two days ago, where I blundered exactly like that. Pawn was on a3, his queen was on b3, my queen was on a5. I ignored a3 and he just he, my pawn wasn't on c5. He just played queen takes. And I think c5 is correct here. Makes a lot of sense to break the center open. Uh, if he castles, I'm going to take on c3, bc3, queen a5, attacking c3 and a2. If he then plays queen b2, I'm going to recapture on c5, and his center is going to be just blown open. Uh, I do have a problem with my c8 bishop still, so b6, bishop a6, or b6, bishop b7 makes a lot of sense. I should be much better here, and absolutely no problems for black. That's what you get when you castle. An easy game. Now I wonder if after castles I can still take on d4. Rook takes d4. Ooh, this seems risky. This seems very risky. Yeah, this seems like a very risky move. He's coming into e5. I can see that. But I can just exchange everything and leave him with horrible doubled pawns. So, c takes d, queen takes d, queen takes knight takes knight c3, bc3 is much better for me c takes d, knight takes d, bishop c3, bc3, uh, queen a5 is also really nice. c takes d, queen takes c, c takes d, knight takes d is what I'm afraid of the most. c d, knight d, bishop c, bc, knight c6, probably unnecessary, b6, probably good. Uh, I could also try 
uh, just uh, g4 g4 but then he has queen g3 g4 queen g3 h5 uh, defending my pawn and threatening to just take no I don't like that g4 seems too weakening I like c takes d just blowing the center open he could castle but I'm going to take on c3 and play queen a5 And then he doesn't have time for queen b2 because I have an extra d4 pawn. Yeah, queen takes this. I'm happy to see just recapture and play against the doubled pawns. No problems for me here at all. Now he might be threatening knight to c7. So I'm not sure I want to play e5, but e5 seems like a very natural move. Although, well, it opens up my bishop, but it might be slightly risky here. Knight c6 seems more natural. But then I isolate my pawns. This, of course, should be a winning endgame for black, but... still requires care so e5 e5 knight b5 knight c6 and then if knight c7 rook b8 and i'm looking forward to playing the move a6 so i kind of like e5 e5 knight b4 is the only move i'm afraid of if he plays knight f3 i'm going to play f6 which isn't too weakening in this position so e5 seems like a good move knight b4 is the only thing i'm looking at uh, and i'm going to follow it up with knight c6 i like having my knight on the most active square i don't really want to play knight d7 or knight a6 and after knight b4 i don't have to play knight a6 because my rook is not hanging my rook has b8 then again if knight f3 perhaps i can continue with e4 just but that just leaves his knight back on uh, on d4 knight f3 i could also just go knight c6 and if he then castles bishop e6 and if rook e1 uh, then f6 and no problems here should be just well yeah okay this is not a threat if knight c7 rook b8 if uh, rook b1 a6 and now his knight is misplaced i i was playing against that uh i don't really care about him taking my c8 bishop if he continues knight d6 that's not such a huge problem uh, yeah i think the opening went well for me uh michel definitely didn't know a lot of theory here bishop g5 uh, seems like a very punishable move i'm not sure i did my best to punish it but i think h6 bishop h4 and and d5 was fine i i don't know he should have continued i don't think he should have continued with e4 and then definitely he shouldn't have allowed uh, g5 and knight e4 and i took on c3 I didn't want to keep my bishop pair because I really believe that this structural weakness is going to tell uh, in the end game. Uh, well, first of all, I'm a pawn up. Secondly, uh, his pawn majority on the queen side is completely useless. There's no way he can use it. And I have a passed pawn on e5 and 
f5 go on uh, bishop d3 uh, seems like a weakening move I don't want to play bishop e6 yet because he then has knight c7 uh, but I sort of like the plan of just going f5 and e4 because I don't know what he does about that so f5 threatening e4 I seem to be getting tons of tempi for nothing and the e5 square for my knight although he then does have the d4 square once again <clears throat> but then again what's bishop d3 about do I need to defend at all I don't think so so f5 castles e4 with tempo but then his knight permanently has the d4 square I don't like that I don't want to give his knight d4 but then again I don't see a way to stop his knight from coming into d4 if I play a6 his knight is coming to c7 and d5 so his knight definitely has the d5 square if he wishes to take it uh, but then I could have bishop e6 dislodging the knight from there but I have a, a pawn majority I should just push it I don't think my pawns are overextended let's just do it if I can push my pawns forward with tempo then then why not do that and when I play e4 I have knight e5 putting pressure on c4 so I'm not wasting uh, anything here I have he has two strong squares d5 and d4 but I have e5 and that's a compromise and I have a passed pawn on the fifth rank fourth rank if you turn the board around Well, castling makes sense, but <clears throat> his king is probably good on e1 for stopping my pawns, so I think a king on g1 would be inferior, although then he has to waste the tempo for rook f1. I don't know. Uh, I think white is lost, but there's still some play in the position. It's not easy. His knight is a very annoying piece. So I'm seriously considering something like a6, knight c7, rook b8, knight d5, bishop e6, and then doubling his pawns, although that might not be the best idea. So I'm not sure how to get rid of that knight. I hate that knight. Hmm. What's the threat here? What's the threat here? I I don't like this because his knight now will have to either capture my bishop or go back. But if I play e4 the bishop moves a6 then his knight is on pre and i would love to trade his knight for my bishop and i can also play after rook d1 rook d8 a6 
Okay, let's not waste time. e4, chase the bishop away first. And then I'm going to play a6, rook d8, and he will have to capture here. And I can always defend b7 with rook d7. I don't like this. I don't like... Uh, I don't like this move, knight d6. I think a knight is much better than a bishop in this position. Especially because, as you can see, my knight, once it stays on the board, has wonderful squares to fight. And also now, just e3, f, f4 is coming. I don't want to put my pawns on dark squares because she has a light squared bishop I want to keep them on light squares e4 and f5 are perfect trying to restrain his bishop uh, if he takes on c8 I'm going to take with the rook first and I'm not going to take on d3 I'm catching up on time so my plan was a6 and his knight doesn't have any good squares. He could play rook f1 or castle. But then I'm just going to play f4. So a6 makes a lot of sense. Is there a better move though? Hmm. a6. I would have to move my bishop before I can play rook d eight but i can play rook f6 so a6 rook f6 a6 rook f6 a6 what if he plays c5 c5 is a good move and then my b7 pawn is weak a6 c5 then i don't have rook f6 should i just try to queen my pawn he might try after a6 also rook b1 a6 rook b1 rook b8 if i then play rook f6 at some point he can take my bishop so i'm not happy about that I might play b6, as surprising as that may seem, but I kind of want to defend my b7 pawn. b6... What does he do then? His knight is still awkward, but at least after b6 I can move my bishop away safely. I want to keep my bishop on this diagonal because he is going to play c5, bishop c4 check. So b6 stops c5 and I like that. It also stops rook b1. And it also allows me to play bishop e3 without losing a pawn. And then I can play rook d8 trying to embarrass his knight later. So I like that. It's a prophylactic move. I don't think my plan with a6, rook f6 worked because of rook b1 uh, and c5. Now I'm stopping c5. I, I don't want c5, bishop c4 to happen. And now I'm going to go for the thematic plan of just bishop uh, e6. Well, thematic would be bishop a6, putting pressure on c4 and then follow that up with knight c6, knight a5 to put pressure on, on c4. In this case I'm going to have a bishop on e6 and the knight on e5, but they will be serving the same purpose, attacking the c4 weakness. I don't have to rush pushing f4 and, and e3, because he has a good light squared blockade. If I put my pawns on dark squares, this bishop is great uh, for controlling the pawns and stopping them. So it's much wiser to keep my pawns on light squares to restrain his bishop. And I have the dark squares to myself for now. Uh, e5, f6, f5 and e3, f4 and e3.
this is a fun position. I didn't expect uh, a slow game from this, but I was a pawn up, and I think it was correct to to go for the end game. I have fixed his weaknesses now with b6, uh, and I'm going to play bishop e6, knight a5. I don't want to give up the d file, so if uh, bishop e6, rook d1, I'm going to play rook d8. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should have gone for an attack and not traded queens. Maybe cd4 was a mistake. I'm going to check the game with an engine later and see. First, I, I'm really curious to see what the engine thinks of bishop g5. Because in conjunction with e4... Okay. Castle's queen side. Not much to do about that. I'm just going to go about my plans. Well, if he moves the knight, he then has rook. Rook d6. Am I afraid of rook d6? No, because I can then play knight a5. So I'm just going to continue with my normal plan. If he moves the knight just knight a5 and rook d6 bishop c4 and now knight e5 is even better uh, looking at d6 with check i mean where does he move the knight anyway uh, knight b4 Knight before knight a5, knight b8, knight b7. I don't have knight a5 because he can take, but I have knight e5. And then if rook d6, uh, just bishop c4. Yeah, c4 is a great weakness in the Nimzo when black captures and doubles the pawns. Usually it's attacked from, from the queen side, uh, where the king is on f on e1, and the bishop is usually on f1, so moving the c-pawn would uh, take castling rights from white, but in this case it's, all, it's also dangerous. I needed to develop my bishop to, to connect my rooks, and now once my rooks are connected, uh, f4 is a way more dangerous move. Yeah, I don't see what he does. His bishop is just a bad piece, stuck to defending uh, c4. Knight e5 is coming, f4, f3 is coming. Although not yet. Yeah. Well. What if he does play g3? That's a good idea, actually. <clears throat> G3 stops F4. I should just continue with Knight E5. That makes a lot of sense because G3 then weakens F3. But... Knight E5 is a good move. Restraining his Knight. Now his knight cannot move, his bishop cannot move. If he plays g3, uh, I don't know. We'll see.
I'm planning to play rook d8 and after rook d8 I'm threatening knight d3 check, bishop takes and uh, rook takes knight where I trade my, my uh, knight for his and c4 is weaker. Yeah, rook d8 is a, is a good move. Rook d8, what does he do? I'm threatening knight d3. So, okay, now it's not check, but... Still... Rook d8 seems like a good move. He's trying to defend c4 with his king. That makes a lot of sense. Rook d8. Uh, knight d3 is my follow-up. Does he have a good move there? He could play knight b7. But then just rook d7. Although after knight d3 he could take on f5. Okay, rook a to d8 seems like a good move. If he takes here, he does have a check, but my rook is defended, so I can just capture this. I really want to play the move knight d3. Okay, why are you giving up a pawn? He's trading his doubled c pawn for, for my a7 pawn, but I also win a2. So that doesn't really work. And I'm threatening to take the exchange. So knight takes c4, threatening knight e3 check, winning an exchange. Uh, knight takes c4, bishop takes c4, bishop takes c4, knight a7, uh, bishop a2. Which piece do I want to keep? I think I want to take with the bishop, because that forces a trade. And then he doesn't have time to take on a7 because I'm threatening the, the exchange. Although he could then take on d8. So bishop c4, bishop c4, knight c4. Rook takes d8. Rook takes d8 and then knight a7. But then I have rook a8. I like that. I'm going to take with the bishop. I want to keep my knight. Because if he takes here, I have rook a8. Uh, if he doesn't trade rook first, I have uh, knight e3 check. And now he has to trade because I'm threatening both pieces. Okay, let's see what happens now. I'm threatening knight e3. He needs to take my rook. Yeah, he missed that. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, he should have taken the rook first. But then he still gives up the a2 pawn with check, but... It would have been better than this. And I still win a2 now, because rook takes rook, rook takes rook, knight takes rook, king takes knight, rook a8, and game over. Yeah. This is indefensible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me just say good game. Good game. Let's check out his move. Okay. Bishop g5, d5 immediately. d5 immediately. Why not h6 first? Because probably he can take on f6. Wait, wait, wait. Now h6 is minus 1. This engine is confused. So here it says d5 is minus 0.4, and then when I play h6, it says it's the best move with minus 1. Okay, a stupid engine. 
Okay, and he played bishop h4, which... Yeah, c5. I was, I was thinking about c5. Why is d5 wrong? d5 is wrong because of e3. And d3 is a common move in the f3 nimzo. So let's see if e3... I retreat my bishop, which I considered, and then what if e4? Take with the knight? What are you crazy? Takes. Oh, the bishop is hanging and the queen is hanging. That makes sense. So if I take here and he takes here, I take here. He takes my queen, I take his queen. He saves the bishop and I can take here. And I'm two pawns up. <clears throat> but after d5, e4 should be just a lost game. Yeah, d4. He took f4. c5? What's wrong with g5? Okay, but how? I don't understand. I was just going to play knight e4. And if queen here? Ah, okay, my knight is hanging. That makes sense. Hmm. And he take with the queen? Ah, okay, I'm threatening the bishop. This is very complicated. Okay. g5, he played bishop f2, which is horrible. Knight e4. Queen c2, knight f2 is correct. Queen f2, c5 is correct. Good. I thought he was going to castle, and then I wanted to play takes here, and queen a5. Queen f6 saves the day. Why? If I just take here. My engine is confused, but should be fine. Knight f3 should be... Yeah, cd. Queen d. Let me see if I did things correctly. Takes. Knight takes. Bishop takes c3. Yeah. More than minus 2. This is a winning endgame. And d5 is correct. Okay. It was a good game. I think I think he, he blundered with bishop g5. He didn't really know the position. Learn your theory. Uh, these variations can get quite tricky, so knowing the theory is important. Okay, uh, let me know what you think, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching, uh, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.